and welcome back to my channel just in case you don't know who I am I'm Katie but you can also call me Dinky if you prefer <laughs> now in today's video I'm going to be carrying on with my mini series which is all about serial killers in particular the female form and now in today's video I'm going to be focusing on Gesch Gottfried who was a German serial killer. Now, like I've said in my previous videos, if this is not your cup of tea, then go and check out my other videos. I have beauty vlogs, beauty vlogs, EDS and disability awareness. Yeah, just go and check them out and see what you think. I hope you enjoy them. Don't forget to give them a big thumbs up if you do enjoy them so I know what people are liking as it really does help me. And just a little disclaimer, you may be wondering why I am really glommed up. Yes, I am glommed up. <laughs> I'm going out for my cousin's daughter's 21st birthday. Too. And yeah, I'm wearing a dress. I haven't got my tights on yet. I've just got my pyjama bottoms on still. So I'm not going to show you everything that I'm wearing. <laughs> so this will have to do for now. And anyway, this video is not about my outfit and my makeup. This is about... Gesh got freed. I do apologise in advance if I pronounce things wrong. I'm not German, although I did learn a little bit of German at school. That was a long, long time ago. And I wasn't even really very good at it back then. So please do forgive me. For anyone who is wondering, I do have notes in front of me on the bed. So if you do see me looking off the screen then I'm looking at my notes because I have a terrible short term memory even you think I'd remember what I've written but I just can't and I apologize about that but that is something that I can't help so I just thought I'd warn you <laughs> guess Margaret got freed and she was born in 1785 on the 6th of March so it was a very long time ago. And she had a twin brother, Joanne Tim Jr. And he was their parents' favourite twin. And their parents were Joanne Tim and Guest Margarita Tim. Really, really confused that they've all got the same names. I never understand why people will call their children the same name that they have. Just baffles me, but... I know that that happened a lot back in the olden, olden days. Don't even know. <laughs> in certain form ways, strange. And they lived in the prosperous northern German city of Bremen. And this is a part of the former Hanseatic League of Cities. And Getsch's father was a tailor. And their home life was modest. They weren't particularly rich in any way. They were, they were kind of poor, you know, they got by. And she had ambitions of making it on the stage. And these two was booming back then. And a generation of German languages, dramatists were helping to propel actors to a kind of stardom. So I'm guessing it's quite a newish thing, it's exciting celebrity culture was beginning to start and Gesch attended singing and dancing lessons to hone her skills. Gesch's father had married Gesch off to a saddler and he was also called Joran Mittelberg. This Joran Mittelberg was very unsupportive of his young wife's ambitions. And he spent most of his spare time in the ale houses of the city and drinking and hauling his money away. And Gesh really didn't like this, she didn't feel comfortable with it. And Mittelberg admitted they were penniless in October 1813. And it wasn't long before he died of an agonising illness. And a year later, Tracy shook again with two aggressive children, 
and both her parents and they all died painfully in the space of two months. In Bremen City, it seemed that death is stalked Middleburg's widow, taking all her family that she had. But the dignity with which she bore such suffering was remarkable, and indeed many spoke of the tireless devotion with which she ministered to her dying family, calling her the Angel of Bremen. No one was suspicious yet, as diseases such as cholera, typhoid and diphtheria wiped out entire families in the European cities of the early 19th century. And guests just seemed to have more than the fair share of grieving to do. Gretchen took up with a wine merchant and he was called Michael Christoph Gottfried and he was there to comfort her as illness claimed another son as well as her brother. Unavoidably, Gottfried sickened and died in July 1817. For the next few years, Gesh lived alone in the comfortable home that she shared with her deceased husband and freshly dressed yet reserved, stoically bearing the hand that fate had dealt her. In 1823, Gesh's neighbour, Paul Thomas Zimmerman proposed to her. Before long, he lingered in agony before dying. At this point, Gesh resolved herself to being alone, albeit with the home Zimmerman had left her in his will. So I'm guessing she had two homes now. I'm sorry, it's just... It's not funny, but I can't help but laugh at it and... <laughs> Over the next few years, 30-something Gesh attempted to maintain a comfortable, fashionable lifestyle her two deceased husbands and fiancé had left to her. And this included a series of loans and selling off some of her properties. Gesh managed to cost for a while, but they came to a head in 1825 when creditors began to knock on her door. In what must have seemed a predictable fashion to the more observant around her, this was when a series of acquaintances and forget friends began to sicken and die around her. Jeez. They were all just dropping like flies, aren't they, wherever she is? Her neighbour, Joanne Wolf, one of those she had sold her properties to. He discovered the truth about Gesh in early 1827. One night she served him salad and he noticed a number of oily white grains among the leaves. And then when a ham dish was served a few days later with the same substance sprinkled over it, Wolf took a sample to a friend he was a doctor for an, an, for an anonymous. <laughs> Could you say that word? Thank you. Man. And bear in mind, this was in the early days of toxicology. And um, Wump's friend was quick to identify what had been added to the food arsenic, as well as a form smeared with fat known as mouse butter, which is used as a rat poison for rodents. Ugh. And unbeknown to guess or to, I don't know if Rolf knew, but he had already examined other bodies of people that she knew that had died. And this is what led to the investigation quickly being launched. Guess resolved herself now that she was under suspicion and managed to slip away to Hanover. But she was eventually tracked down and arrested in late March 1828. The court case would demonstrate that Gesh had poisoned 16 people over the space of 15 years 
making her an early documented serial killer. And she was sentenced to death, but remained under lock and key in the Bremen Gaul Gaul for three years until the sentence was carried out. And while she was waiting for her, die early predecessors of forensic psychologists questioned her about her motivations. And she said that she was motivated by an almost pathological desire not to lose her image that she had built around herself, that she was a woman of substance, bearing the strategies around her with quite determination and affluence poise. She couldn't bear the thought of falling from grace of becoming less than as what she thought of herself to be. She did regret the killings, however. So that's a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> and Gesh claimed that she saw the spirits of her dead family in her cell every night, tormenting her. And she told the gallows, 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 what should I say? This right up until her execution. Gesh met her fate on the 21st of April, 1831. And, and it was a square outside Bremen's cathedral. Yeah, so outside, on the square outside the cathedral was packed and she was led onto the scaffold. And she was finally up on stage in front of the whole city. Her performance was short, but memorable. Can't say it. And it took a long time for Bremen to stop talking about Gesh got freed. Can imagine? And as the last public execution in the city, her crimes and subsequent execution gained a degree of infamy in the city that no other did. Now, if you ever make a visit to Bremen, you can find what is known as a Spuckstein or a Spitting Stone and that's set into the pavement outside the cathedral where her scaffold once stood. And yeah, that's where it shows where the execution took place. But you'll see all bits in the photos that I'm adding on screen. So, very intriguing. I wonder what she thought. Why would you kill your whole family? And your friends run around you. And that is the end of this tale. Sadly it's not a story, it's real life, believe it or not. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I'm sorry if I talked a little bit fast, but I'm in a little bit of a rush today. But if you did give did enjoy watching, please give me a big thumbs up and don't forget to share. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to click on subscribe. And don't forget the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. And I will see you next time. Bye! Bye!